Well, hello everybody and welcome to the live stream. I'm Jesse Showalter, happy that you're here, really excited. It's Saturday, we're gonna be doing some live stream design work, gonna be lots of fun. We got people jumping in the chat already, right now. Uh, Kadir's in the chat, Jiko's in the chat. Carol says it's gonna be awesome. I agree, Carol, it is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for joining. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do that. If you wanna leave a little thumbs up and maybe share this link with somebody, let them know you are uh, watching a live design stream right now put it on Instagram or Twitter and just just tag me at Jesse Showalter because today we are going to be designing a little uh, a little car website where you can use Adobe XD to animate the different angles of the car. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, and so also keep in mind that at the end of this stream, I'm going to be reviewing your portfolios. If you'd like to uh, submit your portfolio, there's a link down in the description that leads to a Google form. All you got to do is drop your portfolio link inside there, submit, and I'll be able to open it up and uh, possibly feature your work on this stream and on this channel. Hope everyone's doing good. Let me know where you're coming from and give me a little emoji of some kind uh, in the chat. I got, uh, Sam is coming from Bangladesh. That's super duper cool. People all over the world jumping on this live stream most likely. And so why don't we, hey, Saral Kumar says, welcome back after a break. I did, I had a little break, had a little vacation. Um, at the end of the summer, so that was super nice. Went camping with my family for a whole week. I didn't touch technology at all. It was pretty rad, a lot of fun, disconnected. So, um, okay, everyone make sure you have your coffee, your drink today. I already drank a cup of coffee and now I'm on to my second drink of the day, which is a legend uh, spicy nootropic drink, super good. Uh, helps me think, helps me focus, helps me concentrate, sets my brain on fire. So I got that. Hmm. Alexander Studio says, yes, yes, ha happy emojis and beers, apparently, and uh, they're coming from London. Carol's coming from Brazil, We've got people from Israel and India, really, really cool stuff. Hey, I'm going to jump over to my screen as I say hello to Peter from Ghana, and uh, we are going to talk a little bit about our design today. Again, I'm using Adobe XD, but feel free to use any program you feel comfortable with. Uh, could use Figma or Sketch, use whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm not a tool snob. I say whatever floats your boat, whatever you have access to, whatever you like. Um, I'm just using XD today because I like the animation features and the prototyping features inside of XD, but you do you and, and I'll do me. Uh, okay, so here's what I have. I have a 19 by 20, 10 by 8, 1920 by 1080 uh, artboard. And uh, that's gonna be our basic website size. And I have some text on the page, literally just the name of a Ferrari, a series, and something I think I pulled off of uh, Wikipedia about Ferrari, uh, just for some filler text. I also have a couple icons over here and some social media icons. And on my desktop, I've already taken a car I downloaded from uh, a stock image website and it had multiple different angles. So I think I have nine angles, okay? And we wanna be able to tap through and see the different angles of the car. You know, in theory, I'd love to be able to slide through, um, but I don't think that functionality exists. Maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm gonna have to do a tap through version today, but we're gonna be angling around this car and that's gonna be lots of fun. Saral Kumar says, I've heard new states and updates in Figma are game changing. Will you do a review about that update? Absolutely, because I heard that's a game changer as well. I'm definitely gonna be doing states in Figma soon because it's big. I, Adobe XD has states, component states, and that's why it's such a big win to me. So if Figma's doing that now, oh, we gotta get on it. Uh, Grenade Codes, set, or Grenade Codes, I don't know how I, if I, is it Grenade or Grenade? I don't know. Says, hey, I'm new. All right, new to the channel, new to design, new to what? New to XD? Let me know. This is gonna be good for beginners and for advanced folks. So first thing I'm gonna do, if you're new, is I have my artboard here, and all I had to do is press A, uh, for the artboard sizes, I could either draw my own artboard or I can use a pre-made size. I just chose a pre-made size of 1920 by 1080. Um, and that artboard has a white background. You can see right over here has that white background. And then um, it has that information on the screen. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring in my all my images of my car. Okay, so we have all of our images of our car. And let's just stretch our screen out here and zoom out so we can see the car, okay? I'm gonna bring these over a little bit so we can see all the cars. 
and I have them labeled one through nine. You can see in my layers panel, one through nine. If you're not on your layers panel, all you have to do is go down here and hit layers. The other options you have are to see your plugins or to see your created assets, which we're about to create right now. We're gonna create an asset, but we wanna be on our layers panel. They're all layered one through nine. So that means if I use my alignment tools, like to align them all horizontally and vertically, they all stack on top of each other. We should see number one on top, which sure enough we do. And if we made that invisible, we would see number two down below, okay? So here's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and grab all of these and we want to create a component out of all of the cars together. So I'm going to press code command or control K, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, command or control K. Now, if I go to my components, you can see I have my car and I'll rename it to be car. What's so great if you're new to Adobe XD or Figma or Sketch, all of them have a similar thing, which is components or symbols or whatever you want to call them, is now I have this component of a car. I can drag out another instance of that car. Here's what this means is later on, if I want to edit the main component, there it is right there, and I go in and actually edit something, it's going to edit it across the board. If I change something, it's going to change it not only the master, but in every instance of that component. Makes sense? Okay, cool. We are going to want to edit the main component for this, so let's bring it on screen with us. Um, and here's the edit that we're gonna want to make. We are gonna want to now, with the uh, component selected, you can see over here in my inspector panel, I have the component states, and I have a default state already created for me. That default state has every car visible. We wanna change that, okay? We wanna come in here and select all of these, and we want to hide them. I always forget the simple command for hide, and that is just command uh apostrophe i believe Ooh, am i missing it there it is so we want to hide commander control apostrophe to hide all of them that is my default state okay now i'm going to create multiple states okay i'm going to create another state here's a new state we're going to call this state two i know really inventive name and all i'm going to do is hide number one reveal number two i'm going to do this nine times okay by just making sure i open up the layers of that component and its state. And now you can see as I flick back through, I have multiple states and we're already rotating the car. Every time I select the last state, it's going to basically start from that last position. And whoa, my computer's locking up on me a little bit. What's going on there? I do not know. Let's get back into gear here. Well, I'm having some technical difficulties. So real quick, let me answer some questions. And while we're doing that, I'm going to restart my laptop because sometimes we have technical difficulties on live streams let's see is there any other questions uh okay subscribe animation on bottom corner is distracting i know i'm sorry i turned it off uh so uh, i don't want to keep that there the whole time first time watching uh hanin says and live and i'm starting to learn ui ux amazing uh what questions do you have about learning ui design or ux design they are separate things there is some overlap but uh, those skills usually go together. And so we'll talk a little bit about both as we're doing this tutorial today. It's mainly a UI design and prototyping design tutorial, uh, but we'll talk a little UX too because I, I do all the above. Um, let's see. Tissam says, should I use a Wacom tablet? I'm a beginner. Hey, you know what? Wacom tablets are great. Wacom tablets are great for graphic design and uh, sketching and lots of things. You can do lots on a, a tablet. But if you want to do UI design, I recommend using a computer of some kind. PC or Mac, doesn't matter. I'm not a fanboy of either. I actually use both in my design work. So um, use whatever you have access to and there's great things, great tools available for both. Adobe XD is available for both. Figma is available for both. Sketch is not available for both. Why, that's why it's not one of my favorite selections, just because it's not cross-platform. Let's see, uh, Vinamra says, do you believe in copying and learning designs? I do believe in copying designs to learn designs. I don't believe in copying designs uh, to shortchange the process uh, or to have that be the thing you do. But I think when you're starting out, it's hard to have a style, right? You don't understand things. That's how I started, by copying things, by downloading templates, tearing them apart, and then putting them back together. So that's what I did. Uh, and so sometimes that helps people. And so I think if that helps you, you should do it. All right, we're back 
in action here. So let's jump back over to my screen and let's jump back to the process of creating our component and component states. So we have our multiple states that are being created. Every time I click plus with a state selected, it's basically creating a new state with all of the, um, all of the previous kind of like things applied, okay? So it's exactly like the previous state until I change it. So we're gonna do a little bit more of this tedious work. We're just cranking away here. Every time I click on that, I click on my component to open up the uh, to open up the layers to it like that, hiding and showing. And we are almost done. Here we go. Again, just opening up my layers. This feels a little bit tedious, I know, but we are going to get there, I promise. All right. So let's go state number eight. Almost done. And one more. Let's go state number nine. Let's open that up and see if we can't click it all the way to the left. All right, so now we have our component state or component that has multiple component states and we can click back through them and you can see the change all the way back to our default state. It looks like rotating, doesn't it? Pretty cool, boom, 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 boom. Okay, and you can, you can change more to each one of these states if you want, but for our use case, this is gonna be all we really need to do. Um, Peter, I am gonna be talking about some typography, so stay, stay tuned, because we're gonna get there. For instance, creating a sign-up button for an iPhone X artboard, what font size would you suggest? I'm not gonna get that nitty gritty, but I'm gonna talk about typography in this project, okay? Here is the problem that I am having. Um, I'm realizing that this car is way too big. So I need to um, edit the master, which you can always tell the master component is the one here with the green dot. If we had an instance, it would have a white dot, which we don't want. So we're gonna grab all the cars in here and size them down a little bit. Well, maybe, maybe it's not. I'll tell you what, let's keep that same size. Let's just. Let's just roll with it, shall we? I was gonna do kind of this left aligned thing, but maybe instead of doing that, we'll just keep it the same size. We'll go really big, really bold, and uh, we will get some stuff done. So I tell you what, let's get this extra typography off of the screen here, and let's bump some of these things up and out of the way, and let's bring our car. Yeah, let's just do it like this. This will be fun, won't it? Let's do it like this, and uh, okay. So we have our, our component down there on the screen. I'm gonna drag, I'm just gonna do a little bit of design work really quick and just kind of finagle a few things into place, okay? So we got our text lock up here and I just want these icons to be kind of center aligned with the text and we're gonna create kind of a margin on the side. So 75 pixels from the edge. Let's drag a smart guide over to the edge. I did that literally just by hovering over the left-hand edge of the artboard like so, and then dragging, <clears throat> excuse me, dragging one, uh, one of these smart guides out. That way I can just align things to there without having to set up a really complex grid system or column layout kind of structure. Mm -hmm. Oh, spicy nootropic ginger drink in the morning is what's up. Um, Carol says more videos about typography would be great. I have some videos about typography actually on my channel. So I have one about typographic scales. I have one about using the golden ratio. Um, I think I have one coming up pretty soon about font selections and uh, pairing fonts. So stay tuned for those, it's gonna be pretty fun. Okay, um, with this said, I like this lockup. I think the bottom of this design is a little bit dull, don't you? So I'm just centering the car kind of optically or visually. Um, it, it looked a little far over to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I want something a little bit exciting on the bottom. So I'm gonna hit R for rectangle in Adobe XD. I'm gonna draw out a rectangle like so. Uh, let's take the border off of it and then let's bring it behind. Okay, we can make this nice thick kind of rectangle. Let's line our icons up in the middle and uh, keep in mind in about 30 minutes or so, we're gonna be doing portfolio reviews. So look down the description um, and you can either submit a link to a specific piece of work or Behance profile, Instagram, or your entire portfolio. So I can bring it up on screen, feature your work and uh, check it out. So that could be kind of fun. Let's do something kind of interesting. Let's take our artboard itself and maybe we'll just drop this to be a little bit more of an off gray color or an off white, excuse me, kind of that nice neutral gray. I think that looks a little bit more elegant. And if you don't like that, we could 
mess with it a little bit and make it even lighter. I like that. You know what this car is missing? I think I'm gonna take E for ellipse. I'm gonna drag out a little ellipse right there. Take the border off. I'm gonna steal one of these red Ferrari colors. I'm gonna move it behind the Ferrari and I'm gonna come down here in my inspector panel and I'm not gonna choose background blur. I'm gonna choose object blur and I'm gonna crank that blur up and then crank the transparency of it down and maybe shorten it a little bit, whoa, like that. We're gonna call this the glow behind the car. Okay, I kinda, I'm kind of into it. Now we don't want it to glow too much, so let's make it a little bit lower profile of a glow, and again, bring it down just a little bit on the transparency, okay? So I like to keep, I wanna keep that under 10%. Otherwise, look how crazy it, it will look if we go too much, right? We're at 8%. That's just a little too intense, it's a little cheesy. We wanna be a little bit more subtle, a little bit more luxurious about it while still giving a little bit of panache, a little bit of style. Now, if you wanted to do something similar, we could do another version of this glow and we could make this dark like this and we could call this one the shadow, okay? And we could bring the shadow down below the car, something like that. Let's make it real skinny and let's bring it up just a bit so we have some dimensionality of the car. That's kind of cool. And we wanna make that shadow real thin right there, okay? So it's just a small detail, it's like nothing, but it just adds, like I said, just a little bit of spice to the design. So we can be real clean and real modern, real minimal, while still having a little bit of you know, control over the design and, and playing with it and having fun. Be exciting, right? So, okay. So we're gonna put, uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep those all grouped together. Uh, now let's not group them together. Let's just lock, let's lock the glow and the shadow. And I think that works out all right. Uh, let's do some other modern kind of touches to this site. I think it could be fun. We're gonna hit L and we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna draw that line straight down this way. And let's just bring the, uh, just the transparency of it down past 45, right around 40. And let's take our little term here, SL series. Let's do, you wanna be trendy and modern, you gotta do some vertical typography like that, okay? So that's pretty cool. And then we'll bring our line up. And then why don't we hide our smart grids, okay? So I always forget how to hide our smart grids hide all guides let's go view guides where is it hide all guides command ah command semicolon that's what that command is okay so let's just uh bring the transparency to this down again it's just a little accent piece um just to bring a fun little modern touch to it that's all we were trying to do let's bring it up a little bit and get some distance and some white space between the bar beneath it okay um okay looking pretty good let's see let's answer a couple questions and stop really really quick uh okay somebody says Saral says excited for the font pairing video i'm going to be doing soon i know me too it's going to be a lot of fun for some reason i imagine the dark background with a lighter glow in the background almost like an actual light behind the car you could totally do that here i mean we could totally after we're all done we could do a light and a dark version and maybe we will do that we'll show you how easy it is to flip over from a dark mode to a light mode and that's probably more relevant for like an interface uh, but it could still be pretty fun for us in this one let's bring a little bit more spice to this to this bar, shall we? Like this is a car site, it's a luxury car site. This should be a little bit more fun. So why don't we, uh, I'm gonna bring this rectangle down and I'm going to angle it like so, okay? Then I'm going to, ooh, you know what we're gonna do? Command or Control R, I'm gonna repeat grid, okay? Repeat grid is an Adobe XD feature that allows me just to grab an element and make multiples of them really, really quickly like that, okay? And then what I wanna do is I just use the sizing I grabbed and just resized all of them together. Then I wanna ungroup from the grid and I have these great uh, little shapes here, okay? Let's bring our, our bar down here. And why don't we, uh, actually I'm gonna group that together. Why don't we flip this and make it go the other way like racing stripes almost, right? I like it and we have this shape um, and we wanna make sure it's above our white shape. We're gonna grab both of them and let's just subtract. Boom, 
Get some fun little racing stripes just on the left-hand edge of that thing. Kind of cool, kind of fun, okay? Let's come back down here and we're gonna have just a little bit more fun with this bar. Let's put the word Ferrari 550 or F50 in there. Center everything. And I would call, ooh, let's take both of these elements and make sure our social media links surface there. Group it all together and I'm gonna rename this the bottom bar and I'll lock it. We probably don't have to play with that anymore. If you wanna play with it some more, like maybe I'm actually kind of unhappy with how large that typography is. And I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit more like why that typography would bother me. It's because it is it's too dominant, right? Let's look at it again, how big that typography was. It's distracting. It makes, here's, a, here's a, some UI design tips, right? What's primary? What's the thing we want users to do? We want them to look at the car and know the information. If we're putting accent information, like what series it is over here, or maybe like repeating information, we don't wanna compete with the original display of that information, right? We want to make it secondary, tertiary, design-esque, like, or, or purely just visual um, as like a complementing feature. We don't wanna just bombard everything with prominence or priority, okay? So that's the thing we wanna do. Let's move our car up a little bit and let's build the last piece of this, which will be our actual controls. Um, Ooh, let's grab the shadow and the glow too. We want to move all of those as a group, don't we? We want to have some controls to uh, actually rotate this car in our prototype. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to borrow some typography here and I'm going to zoom in and let's build a control. First thing to build our control is we'll probably have the number of the image that we're currently looking at. Then we're going to have probably a progress bar. Okay, so let's drag a progress bar out. Let's round the corners. Okay, so we'll go in here to our border radius and just round the corners of this guy. Take the border off and let's make it like a very light gray. And for a progress bar, all you gotta do is Command C or con Command or Control V, or Command or Control C and then V to copy and paste a new version. And let's darken the second one up and we'll just move it back. And look at that, we're making progress. We have one just like that or you know what we could have done a smarter way to do this would have been to grab both of these things and line them up and then take the top one did you know you could do math in the inspector panel of adobe xd you can so we can say hey it's 706 pixels that's the width of this thing so let's do a little bit of math and uh, we'll say divided by nine because we know we have nine slides that are about to go in there. Let's see if we can get it. Yep, divided by nine and hit return. And that is exactly a ninth of what it needs to be, okay? So we'll say, we'll call this one progress. We'll call this one bar. And, uh, and then on the other side of this, maybe this text can be a little bit smaller like that. On the other side of this, we're gonna need an arrow, something to click on, okay? Um, so that could be easy to do. We just draw another little rectangle. Let's make our own custom little icon right now. This is custom icon design, right? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna move it to be an off black like it should be. Um, I'm going to round my edges like so. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Boom, we're gonna get really nitty gritty now, so let's zoom in. I'm gonna make a duplicate and I'm just gonna use the flip button like that. Boom, and connect those two. I'm gonna join them together using my, my Pathfinder, my Boolean operations, right? I'm gonna add them together, they become one. And now I can mess with it as a single icon. Maybe I wanna stretch it out a little bit more that way. Maybe it's just fine as it is. Is it the best icon? Probably not, but it's working for us. So let's let's do a little consistent spacing. 40 pixels away, the number from the bar. Let's do another 40 pixels away there. And now we have the whole thing. So let's go arrow here and let's go command and control K. Let's make a let's make a component out of it. That way if we need to use that arrow later on, uh, we can do that, okay? And we have our progress and our bar and we have our counter. Now every time I hit the arrow, I want to see the progress bar move and I want to see the number move like to the next number, okay? How do we do that? Uh, we're gonna simply go 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, and 09. Do we get, do we get all of them? Ooh, that's 089, we don't want that. We're gonna start setting ourselves up 
for our prototype, okay? Um, and here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna use a little line height and just space these out so they have, they have some space there. We're gonna create our own nested component in here, okay? And this is gonna be the first step in our kind of nested component kind of tutorial. So I'm gonna group these together or make a component out of the bar and the actual progress bar itself. Command or Control K. And let's go into our assets. Now you can see we have arrow and we have progress bar, right? Okay. Um, we also, we're gonna do, you saw how we did masking before with our shapes down here. Let's reuse that same idea, okay? And let's take the border off of it. I'm gonna grab the text and the, uh, and the, or we use the Pathfinder tools, excuse me. Now we're gonna mask. I'm gonna take the shape that I made and the uh, numbers here, and I'm going to mask with shape, okay? When I do that, we created a mask. Think of a mask like a hole that you've punched through and you can only see what's, what's actually cut out in the hole. So as things slide behind it, we're seeing everything that's masked. That's what a mask is. So now I can come in and I can move these and we'll only see what's, what's in the punch out basically, right? Okay. I want to create command or control K. I want to create our counter component. And I'm going to want to create all the different states for that. So state, the default state is when it's on one. Okay. State two, is it going to be on two? Just like that. State three, here comes a little bit of the tedious stuff. So let's try to answer some questions. Do you have your design wireframed on paper for the live streams? Or do you go with the flow during the stream? I have a basic idea of what I'm going to do um, in my mind. Um, or maybe it's a, a design that I've made similarly. Uh, a similar design that I've made in the past. And so that way I can be freed up to kind of teach and answer questions. Um, and I'm not so worried about like getting bogged down because you know and I know that the design process is very iterative and it'd be very, very hard to design something that you're really excited about in 45 minutes. That's just, it's impossible. You gotta give yourself more time. So uh, if you see somebody who is claiming to design everything from scratch on screen, they're probably lying to you, okay? They're probably lying to you because they have to have something they're going off of unless it's like a five hour stream. And I don't wanna bog you guys down with a five hour stream. So now we have all our states, boom, two, three, four, just like that, looking pretty good. We also have our progress bar. We're gonna wanna create states for that too, right? Okay, so let's create our new state there. And we're gonna do 70, let's just, 78, okay, times two. It's gonna spread our, our width out a little bit. Let's do another one, okay? Um, <clears throat> and, oh, 72, oh, well, our first date is the width of this section is 78. Okay, so we're gonna have to add 78 each time to this guy. So let's go uh, plus, 78 and let's copy that so we can just add it like that each time okay back to our tedious stuff let's answer another question um adding little elements tweaking the enhances the tweaking enhances the design so much so i'm curious about your process the process of adding little tweaks here or there i would say that that process uh is built on experience and having a little bit of an idea of what I want to accomplish, which is uh, to make something that um, not only works good, but looks good. And I think there's always a way just to add some little accents. And so you can build a really beautiful UI design um, and not worry about those things. But I think that's the difference between a good UI designer and a great UI designer is they say, hey, this is not only functional and utilitarian and it works and all the controls and everything are there, but we've also found ways to make it look really beautiful without interrupting or being distracting from the primary goal. So for instance, we want people to rotate this car, see the car, get information about the car, we wouldn't want to add a bunch of stuff that would be super duper distracting uh, to the user as they're doing it, but just maybe make them go, wow, this is really nice and fleshed out, right? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like take an image of the car like this. And, and I mean, you could do this if you wanted to. I could take an image of the car like this and bring it down and, you know, go into the background and put it something like that. Oh, look how cool that looks. Let's bring it down maybe a little bit more. So we have just some 
like an accent thing there. That could look cool. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but for me, I'm going, is that accomplishing anything? Is that helping the user to do what they need to do? Or is it going to be a really good dribble shot? That's the thought that's in the back of my mind, right? So for me, I'm going, I don't really think that's necessary. I'd rather them focus on the car right here and not necessarily put a little, I don't, I'm not trying to build a poster. I'm trying to build something that's usable, functional. Okay, with all that being said, now it's time to, we're gonna bring all of these things together and we're gonna create our first nested component or, or, or prototype that's nested, okay? We have all the different states for the number and the progress bar, and we have our little component over here. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to uh, group these together and call this our master progress bar, okay? And we're gonna to wanna to make a component out of a command or control K. I'm gonna open this up and because I'm using nested prototype, or excuse me, nested components, and each of those components have states, I'm gonna to wanna to draw one more rectangle and we're gonna call this kind of our invisible tap area, okay? So let's just call this tap and we're gonna move this, excuse me, we're gonna get rid of it and plop it and make sure it's right there in our layer stack, it's on top, it's consistent, it'll always be able to be tapped. That's gonna be our trigger point when we get to prototyping. If you're not big on prototyping, you don't know what I'm saying right now, you'll see here in just one second. Now I have my master prototype bar and that com component has components inside of it. Congratulations, you just made your first nested component, right? Components inside of components. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a new default or new state, right? state number two and state number two for this entire grouping that I have here, excuse me, right here of my master progress bar is going to be uh, with each of them having the other states inside of it changed a little bit. Okay. Boom. Just like that. Okay. Um, and, and that's all we have to do. So we move from state one to state two, state one, state two. Let's do a little bit of our tediousness again. I know you're going like, ugh, do we have to? Yes, we do, we have to. Uh, we're just grabbing each one of the other, the internal components and manipulating their states every time we create one of these outer containing states. So state four for the entire thing is composed of state four on the number and state four on the progress bar, just like that. Let's go back out to our, our master here, Boop, just like that. State five consists of each internal piece being state five. Click off of it, click back on. Boop, new state, okay, boom, we're gonna go state six and state six, okay? We're getting close, I'm gonna answer some questions here and we're gonna be done here pretty soon. Excuse me, let's go back, we're at state five, state six, create that new state that consists of state seven and state seven, good. Let's do one more state eight, cause we gotta, we gotta hurry up here. Okay, where it's gonna be composed of state eight there and state eight there. Let's say that works for us, okay? Now we should be able to go back to our default state and let's head over for the first time to our prototype tab. I'm gonna click on prototype, okay? And we're gonna do, uh, from our default state, we're gonna click on our invisible tap spot and we're not gonna drag this anywhere because we don't have any other artboard to go. We're just gonna tap it and say on tap, we want to auto animate over to state two, okay? Then when we go to state two, we're gonna do the same thing, auto animate state three, okay? Then on state three, let's auto animate over to state four. I think that's enough examples for us to get started. So why don't we check our prototype out really quick? We should be able to tap right here. We should be able to see the number move and the progress bar move at the same time. Super nice, clean little prototype. So we only did four of them because I don't wanna bore you guys. Okay, um, here we go. The next thing we're gonna do is the same. Now we have a nested component, right? <gasps> Can we nest another component? Can we go nested inside of nested? What's that like Inception and I'm Leo, Leo DiCaprio, like four layers deep? We're about to do it, ready? I'm about to grab my car, okay? And my master progress bar. I'm about to nest those. Oh my gosh. We're gonna call this um, master just master element or something like that, okay? And the car has its own states. The component that we created has its own states, okay? So now we should just be able to say, I want state two. State two 
is gonna be, you guessed it, the car at state two and the bar at state two. Ooh, the car and the bar, that rhymed. I didn't mean for it to. Good, we're gonna go state three. Oh my gosh, how easy is this gonna be? We're gonna go state three on the car, state three on the bar. Got it? Let's do another one. Let's go back to our car, our master element here. State four will consist of state four on the car, state four on the bar. You guessed it. Okay, that's enough examples to get us going. Let's go to our prototype. Let's let's hook this whole thing up, shall we? Okay. Um, with that being said, we actually, we did a little bit extra work that we didn't need to, okay? So we could click inside of our prototype here and we could actually, uh, we could get rid of, let's click inside of our, our progress bar. We actually don't need the tap in there, okay? So we didn't need to do all that work because we knew that we were going to do an extra level of nesting the components. If that doesn't make sense to you, let me explain right now. Now we have this master component, right? And we need to make sure that we have, similarly, some sort of tap state inside of it. When I put it inside of that first default state, we, it, it's recursive. It's gonna, anything you add to the default state is gonna add to every other state. That means, let's see if I was in my master element and I decided to draw an ellipse, okay? Just a big old ugly ellipse. That ellipse is gonna show up, or at least it should, in every other one. Maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm wrong. I'm gonna stop talking right now, but it should. So now we have our tap element. Let's go back to default state, okay? Go over to prototype. And we'll say here, we'll grab our tap trigger. So inside of our master element, we have a tap element, we have our master progress bar, and we have our car. We're gonna do the same thing we just did. We're going to tap, okay, auto animate to state two. Then we're gonna go to state two and do the same thing. We're gonna go to state three. Let's go to state three, tap it again. Whoa, I messed up here. Go to state three, get the trigger, animate to state two four and take the whole thing back to state one. Now we should be able to see the car move. Oh, we messed up somewhere, didn't we? Let's go, let's go, let's fix it here. What do we do? We have state one, state two, state three, ay chihuahua. State three should move the car to the next one like that. Good, okay. And then state four, should move the car one more state like that. Okay, good. Let's make sure we're back at our default state when we start our prototype. And now we should be able to move, move, and move just like that, okay? Pretty slick, right? Let's look at it one more time. We should be able to move, move our bar and everything is moving like that. Okay, pretty good. There's a little bit of balance issues and spacing issues that we definitely wanna fix, but that is the basics of prototyping this. Somebody asked earlier, hey, wouldn't we wanna, I, I like the idea of this maybe being a dark website instead. We could do that. Let's just bring a copy of this thing down. When we copy our artboard, all of those same prototypes and like triggers and everything are there. So let's do car dark style or dark mode, okay? And let's choose a nice dark color in the background like this, maybe an off black. Let's take our bar and we're gonna unlock it. Let's make our the fill of our bar to be full on like black color like that. And then we're gonna have to bring all of our, our icons and everything to be white instead of black. Okay, all of our text in here needs to be moved to white. Uh, all of our icons, again, their borders and their fills need to be white. Uh, let's make this thing white so it stands out a little bit more. And white as well. You know what's really great is I use transparency instead of picking specific colors. And so that made it really, really simple. What I'd wanna do with my bar then is I'd want to make a, another version of that bar um, where my text, all of my text inside, or actually this is an instance, so I should be able to just change it like that. And this should also be an instance of my symbol so we can change it just like that. So why don't we do a quick prototype shift, uh, one more prototype and then we'll get going, okay? So let's click on this and that'll lead us there. We'll just transition like so and whoa. And let's grab 
our icon and we'll just prototype our way back, okay? So now we should be able to go to dark mode, back to light mode, should be able to click through. Let's go, let's go over to dark mode. We'll click through on dark mode. We lose a little bit of our controls because we gotta fix all of the component states that go with it. So, but that is pretty much the design, folks, and the prototype. Okay, um, let's j Jesse, can you do a cyberpunk themed website uh, when the game comes out, maybe? Maybe. Actually, you know what? A while ago, I did an Xbox design video uh, where I, in Adobe XD, I design and prototype an Xbox site, and I think I used some cyberpunk imagery in there, so maybe check that one out on my channel. Um, I find that I can, BMAX says, I find that I consistently want to make changes to everything at the end of the building a product I want to revisit, constantly changing the product. Do you ever run into that dilemma? I think I used to. Now, hold on, let me rephrase that. Uh, design is always iterative, right? So you're going to launch a product into the wild, whether it's a website, an application. You should always be testing and saying, is this doing exactly what we need it to do? Is it accomplishing? Are the users happy with it? Is there a better way that we could do this? But if you're designing things and then before you even launch it, you're going, I don't like this, I wanna start over. I don't like this, I wanna start over. There's some natural part of that because as designers, we're probably perfectionists. We wanna put something out that looks the best, obviously. Um, but I think you might be missing out on the research portion. So spend a lot more time researching than you do designing. By the time you get to the design tool, you'll actually be a lot happier. It'll be a lot smoother. You'll be flowing through things because you feel very rock solid about what you're supposed to make, right? If you gave a, a builder uh, uh, the task of building a house without uh, the architect's plans, the architect or the, the builder might be really, really apprehensive to put a wall somewhere. But as long as he has the architect's plans, he goes, that wall is gonna be there, right? So um, let's see, uh, Jesse, will you explain the component and the nested states? Sure, I can do that, let's do it. Let's get into the component and the nested states. So let's talk about a component, right? At its simplest form, we had this, uh, we had this uh, little, whoa, where did it go? Where did it go? We had this little arrow, that's a simple component, right? And we know that over in our assets panel, if later on somewhere else, we wanted to use another one of those arrows, we can drag them out, okay? And instances of a component can be modified like color and, and uh, like size. But if I ever change the master component of it, right? So we could say, hey, let's edit the main component. There it is right there. If I go ahead and change this to be stretched out, most of the arrows are gonna probably stretch out, okay? That's how it's supposed to be anyways. I don't know what just happened there. That's a normal component. Then you nest components, right? So we had, uh, for instance, we made a component out of this progress bar and this counter that we made and this arrow. We nested them together into this master progress bar right here. This is a component made up of other components. Does that make sense? Okay, that way, look, we can drag out another master progress bar over here, whoa, let's put it out in the middle of nowhere like this, like that, right? We have this other, let's move some stuff out of the way so I can do a little example here. So we can create this master component bar, but if I ever, or excuse me, we can create this instance of this component bar or a counter or whatever, but if we ever come back in and edit the master, and again, you know it's the master because it has this little green diamond at the top left versus an instance of that component has a white diamond. If I change, theoretically speaking, if I change this to be red, it changes red everywhere. Why is that? Because we wanna work smarter and not harder. Imagine if you had this component used on 75 different places in your website, on a home page, on a product page, on 50 other product pages, and in your design, you had to go back and change the color of these one by one. That super stinks. So you wanna change it once and have it change everywhere. And the all changes that are reflected for a single component will also happen in every instance where that component is also nested, like here in our nested progress bar. Then I went one level deeper and I took, now look what we have here. We have individual uh, components nested inside of another component. And we took that master progress bar and the car component that we made and we nested them inside of another one. Right? All that does is group them together so I can reuse them, right? I have this master component. Boop, I can drag another version of it out. Look, there it is. 
It's so, so easy, right? So I can make another, uh, uh, another page somewhere and put our nested component on it. And when I prototype it, it's already gonna work. It already has all the functionality of our prototype baked in. That's, pro that's components, nested components, and even further nested components. They hold on to all the functionality, including the prototype stuff that's baked into it, how everything's hooked up. Okay, um, I am going to zoom over to my main camera. I'm gonna jump online and I'm gonna see if anybody has submitted work to be reviewed inside the form that is in the description of this video. Let's check it out and see if we got anybody portfolio review submissions. Do we get any responses yet? We have a couple of responses five responses to be exact okay so i'm going to bring up a couple of these on my screen and i'm going to be finishing off our day by looking at a few of these all of them are behance profiles so i'm into that and let's just get started, shall we? If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. I'd super appreciate everybody. And also, hey, if you want the design file for the file that I just uh, I got done working on, if you become one of my YouTube members, you can hit that little join button on my channel, become either a supporter, an insider actually, gets more detailed information about my channel. So you'll get all the design files that I work on, you'll get inside scoop, behind the scenes footage, uh, as well as links to my videos before they come out. So think about becoming um, an insider and getting all those files. So, uh, all right, our first portfolio to review of the day is by Samit Alam. He's from Bangladesh. And uh, it, this person is, looks like uh, just kind of a generalist UI or generalist designer. Cause we got lots of different stuff. We got some UI stuff down here, some poster design, maybe logo design, I'm not sure. Um, let's look at one of these. Ooh, is this a packaging design? I, I'll, I'll review some packaging design. I don't do a lot of it, so I wouldn't claim to be an expert, but let's look at this piece of work, okay? By Samit uh, Alam. Uh, I like the colors. I like the presentational materials here, like, right? It's uh, cotton candy flavored, so you use some of the branding and the elements to kind of present it. Um, I think that the colors are exciting. It's got a lot of energy. I think you have good usage of icons and basic kind of typography layouts. Um, your spacing is really, really nice. I'd like to know if you just bummed this uh, this branding or if you created the branding also or just re-implemented it. If not, just all together, it's a really nice implementation of um, this brand and everything that's there. This is probably a little unrealistic, right? The design to swoop up, swoop up onto the plastic cap, although you could have plastic wrapping that goes all the way to the top and they have to peel to unwrap. So maybe it's not impossible, but um, definitely a cool thing. I like the it seems like there's a lot of colors here. There's some differences in the color using like the cotton candy, like the uh, like the pinks and the blues. But actually, you could kind of break this down to a three color palette, couldn't you? You have variations of pink, blue, and white. And because the, the design or the graphic behind it's kind of busy, it's simplified by the simple use of colors. So I think you did a really, really good job there. I like it. I love it a lot. I want to look at some of your UI work because I'm into that stuff. Let's look at this sign-in page. Looks like it was done in Adobe XD. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. So um, I think that this might be some of your earlier work, not sure, but I don't think this carries the same uh, excitement and kind of smoothness as the previous packaging design work that I looked at. Um, some of the problems I see here um, is really bad spacing on the icons and um, just not enough space here in your input fields. Also, your input fields kind of look like input fields, but not really. So when it comes to UI design, you really got to make sure that things that are things, interactable things, buttons, input fields, drop downs, clickable items, they look like the standard. If you're gonna do something really interesting out there, you gotta, you, you gotta play with some of the standard default things to help it, okay? Uh, likewise, these buttons, I'm not a big fan of the buttons being the same color as the background. Give me an accent color. Give me something that's punchy, that, that brings people's eyes to the primary function or the thing you want them to do, which is fill in these form fields, which should look like form fields, and tap this button which should look like a button. Also, lastly, I'll say is, um, you know, watch out for your drop shadows. You have drop shadows everywhere. You're kind of using them for no real reason, it seems like, and they're heavy. This is, this is something you gotta be really careful. When I do drop shadows on buttons, 
I always stay under 10% transparency on them. They should be subtle, they should be nice. There's a way to do drop shadows and a way not to do drop shadows. And I think you're kind of struggling a little bit with the implementation of them. Um, okay, I think that's good. Uh, submit Alam, thank you so much for submitting work. Let's head over to Alexander Burgos. Uh, and Alexander is from the United Kingdom. He's a UI UX designer living in London. Let's take a look at this home decoration with furniture. Is this a website? What is it? I'm so excited. Really modern, really clean. I like the usage of the lines. Um, I'm not sure about this control over here uh, being kind of spaced in this circle. I actually could have done without this aesthetic element. I think it it kind of confuses and it, I don't know, it's kind of distracting actually because the kind of general old school reading pattern, right, is I, I look at the, the branding on the top, which this might just be a quick placeholder branding. I'm not a fan of it though. It's a little bit confusing. I want brand recognition. I want to be able to identify it quickly, but I'm going to Z across the page. I look at all my options and then I look down across this way. So in, in that regard, you are doing something nice here, but the contrast between the typography and the background image is not quite there. I would actually, if I was to redo this site, I would actually keep all the lines and the structure in place. I like that. I think it, it's kind of art deco, kind of modern furniture style. I like it, but I would actually take the image and encapsulate the image and like maybe here you know and have the typography and the and the main call to action kind of overhang over the image and have the background be white uh it's going to clear up a lot of space it's going to give your design a little bit of breathing room it's going to make it feel a little bit more modern i think and and who knows maybe down below you're going to do a lot of stuff with white space and counteract that but based off of what i look at i like the vertical typography the hamburger menu not my favorite um, I'm not really sure what it is, what it does. It looks a little bit long. It's just, that's going to be a personal preference, not a design faux pas, but I'm just not sure about this control and the use of contrast in the image. But I think overall you're on the, you're on the route to a nice, a really, 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 really nice design and layout. I would just do a little bit more art direction with your image selection and the way that things are laid out. Let's look at the landing page for a gym or personal trainer. Okay. Okay, let's look, 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 look. Uh, this is the landing page? I can't, I can't tell what's the landing page and what is the presentation. Is this all? Okay, this is, the, this is the landing page. Okay, let me click the little video prototype. I see. Okay. Okay, scrolling down. I like the big, bold sections. Those are nice. The images being offset. That's kind of cool. The only thing I would say about this is okay hold on oh you're gonna take us somewhere else take me take me there i like it you clicked on something you got a nice animation for your for your uh oh look we're doing a little fill in action did you do all of that with oh that's nice I, you probably masked out a second version of the letters that's a slick little rollover animation me like it i'm into it this is a little cramp down here this vertical text and the um the social media links not the biggest fan of that um, kind of layout. Uh, I'm wondering, okay, why is the color behind it changing? I'm not sure, that's weird. You might be trying to do like an animation or it might just be like a mistake. That's, it's bugging me though, it's really bugging me. So I would definitely work that out. Again, kind of a similar thing. The form kind of looks like a form, it kind of doesn't. You know what I mean? It's right on the border, right on the edge of being a great implementation of a form and not really being a great implementation of a form. Also, we have overlapping images here, do we? Okay, I see, this is another image and it punches out. I, you know, and I, I see you're doing that. So you're kind of stacking things, right? You have your main image of the super duper jacked guy and then you have this other image and it almost feels like this is a white box behind here, but it's not defined really clearly. There's no dimensionality to your overlapping. So I would maybe play with some dimensionality. These are kind of awkward size, kind of like gaps here. This is an awkward size gap. There's not a lot of white space between the edge of uh, your your measure here for your typography and that's a tiny little gap so I'd want to see a little bit more something a little bit more over here that shows me that's intentional and it has dimensionality love the off canvas kind of uh, like headline thing you have going on there really really nice I like that this style of typography links up to your menu where you have the animated style use a little bit more of that I liked it I see you're using it there as well doesn't really pop out as much there um, maybe you could do something with that the images are great, again, being staggered in different sizes. 
Um, but I feel like they're also trying to be a little too symmetrical, right? They're different. You have things that are lapped, but then here you're trying to go back to a symmetrical kind of thing. I would offset them even more or maybe look for some overlap. Again, keep that trend going down the page. So I think it's interesting. I think it was a decent implementation. Let's look at one more really, really quick. No, not this one. Uh, I already look at that and I'm not a fan of it. I don't know why. Sorry. Um, this one is interesting. See, here's like encapsulated photo, nice typography, but again, I mean, it's not that it's a bad implementation, but bring them together into a single lockup somehow. Like, dude, if this if this image was over here, and uh, you know, oh gosh, how, how can I how can I let's let's do let's do something like this, right? Um, if that image was over here, right? Let's fill it with gray just so we have something. And then you had your I'm gonna do a big wireframe thing. You had your little wavy kind of shape thing like in the background here and then your typography was the whole deal like that it could be cooler you could offset this little wavy thing somewhere like that and then the whole thing feels integrated and pulled together right now it feels like a yard sale it's, it, it could be kind of a cool abstract layout or maybe it looks like it's a little like it's done a little bit funky see look oh see you were already on what i was talking about look at the overlap the vertical text implementation the overhang the dimensionality uh, center line text with that much text, bad idea. Don't do this, okay? We don't like this much center line text. Um, if you have to do center line text, then you have to, but here you didn't have to. You should have stuck with left align. The reason being, you've created multiple rags now in this typographic measure, right? You have a rag on the left, rag on the right. It's hard for the eye to read. We're not used to this. As a culture, we read left, right, or right to left. Very, I don't know any cultures that read center aligned. It's just not a thing, right? Okay, beautiful implementation here. Great contrast with a little imagery behind it. Almost maybe too much imagery. I could have done with just the image and not whatever these words are um, because you have more imagery over here. You could have played off of that. The dimensionality here is good. I like services. I like the, I, I would actually not have overhanged here. Maybe clean this up and done something similar to what you did down here with your icons, which is stack it above because then you'd be creating like a reusable design pattern, like a UI pattern. So maybe just a thought, this is gorgeous. Love it a lot. Can't say anything about that that's bad. Um, again, beautiful, maybe pop this above. Um, balayage, okay, cool. And you have your Instagram feed down below. It feels like that was just kind of slapped in last minute. Like you did so much with everything else. And at the end you were like, just give me a horizontal row <laughs> of images. Maybe you could have played with it. Or maybe this was a real life implementation. You had to code it and you're like, I just want it to be simple because embedding Instagram feeds can be a pain sometimes. But Alexander Burgos, I love it. Really, really nice work. You know what? I appreciate this work. I love it. Actually, just can we just appreciate everybody's work so far? I appreciate it. Um, really nice. Okay, let's look at one more. This is satorigraphics.net. Uh, beautiful portfolio, personal website. Love the layout right now. Gorgeous work, okay? So let's just... Let's get some stuff out of the way. Ooh, we have a fun little mouse kind of hover or, or follow action, little JavaScript action. Beautiful. This is actually kind of a real life implementation of the prototype that we just saw, right? But beautiful kind of like menu there. You can see all the portfolio works. Nice little transition. I love it. Love the little animations. Everything here is just really, really dialed in and really beautiful. I can drag these. It seems like maybe I can drag these or I have to click on them to bring them over. Do I, can I, okay, hold on. Digital downloads portfolio, can I click on it again to go to the portfolio? Ah, okay, the site is loading. Nice, everything's so slick, oh my gosh. Did you code this yourself? If you did, I'm super jealous. I wanna be like you when I grow up. It's really, really nice. Um, kindly scroll down, curated collection. That's fun, it's an engaging little thing. I mean, I personally like to get to work a little bit quicker, but I can see it. You're showing creativity as well as presentation. It's really, really nice. The loading animation super slick. Start out with the branding, you can't go wrong. Everything slides down. It's a logo design project. You show beautiful implementations of it. What else do you need? I, I actually, I, if you're gonna show the logo in its simplest form right here, maybe, I don't know, maybe a recommendation. It could be right, could be wrong, but maybe show more of a money shot here, something gorgeous, like show it on a giant billboard or a street sign or some sort of just gorgeous presentation material here. Then you show me the simple version and then you show me like some more stuff down below. But I mean, I can't say anything about this. This is really beautiful. It's all great work. Let's go to a digital downloads page. Okay, why not? Show me digital downloads. What do you got for me? Oh my gosh, all this is so great. We can download some card packages. Great, make you some side income, Satori. Get this done. 
The site's just really, really clean. This is everything that a site should be. I wonder what it looks like on mobile. Let's just really quickly. Can we just see it on, uh, can we just see it on, on an iPhone? Golly, give me iPhone X. What does it look like? Uh huh. Oh, yep, it realigns, good, nice. We got the portfolio. What's our menu look like on mobile? Looks really clean. Let's go back to home, uh huh. Okay, looking at the portfolio, okay. Everything just looks really, really pretty. Center aligned, nice stuff. Great, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. In every screen size and resolution, you did a really good job. This is a little jumbled, but I mean, what do you do? You keep this, you're keeping this side navigation thing. I honestly like, it's getting really nitpicky, but maybe something that might benefit you is on mobile, dropping these to like an anchored left, bottom left or bottom right social media, and then dropping Satori up here and just go into one, because I have like multiple, do I have multiple ways to hit the portfolio? Kind of, I, I'd, I'd maybe simplify that. It's like too many navigations on mobile, but again, that could be totally preference. Let's do one more, really great work there. Darminish Rathod is uh, from India. He does some UI work. Let's look at a little daily exercise thing he had going on. Did you illustrate this yourself too? Because it's really pretty. I like it. I'm, I wanna see a little animation of it. Please turn on and off. Yes! Love that animation. So beautiful, super fun. Did you do it next D? Probably, you can totally do that next D. It's gorgeous. Here's a little daily UI of a watch countdown app, I think, countdown timer app. Okay, yeah. Uh, I like the interface itself is nice. The presentation of it's a little funky. It's like drop shadowed and not really leveraged into the shot very good. But I think it's it's a pretty, I think you're going for a little bit of that new, new morphism kind of style. Uh, if you're going for new morphism, I think you gotta do a little bit more work. These shadows need to be a little softer. Um, I'm not a big fan of the neomorphism or whatever it's called style. I just think it's a fad. I think it's gonna pass. I'd like more simple kind of design patterns or design styles. Um, yeah, this is an okay interface. Um, I think some of the problems you're having here is kind of balance, use of white space, drop shadows are a little bit interesting and funky. Um, and then this is really, really cramped. These spaces are really, really cramped and these toggle switches are really, really small and cramped. So you could spread these sections out and um, I, I think you'd be better off for it. Also, if this is navigation, then that's kind of troublesome because it looks more like a filter icon, something that'd be generally known as a filter icon. So, but I think in general, um, I think it's a really, really nice implementation. And I just, yeah, I think good work, but I think that's it. I think we're at the end of our time. I might have a moment we're about an hour into the stream and I might have a moment to answer a few questions. So Shockwave says, uh, is Illustrator necessary for UI and UX design or just XD? It's nice to have both. Um, it's nice to have, uh, be able to use both and it, you know bring the whole thing together. So that's a thing. Um, you don't have to, you could do some of your icon design in XD. I like doing an Illustrator better and then bringing everything over. It's There's just a lot of more fine-tuned control in Illustrator right now. So um, Satori has an amazing YouTube channel, especially for people looking to get into logo design. He does actually, that's where I know the name, Satori Graphics. He's on YouTube. That's right, let's collaborate, bro. Let's make a video together, that'd be fun. Um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Hanin says components seem like object-oriented programming. Kind of, right? You can you create a component and reuse that component everywhere. Or like CSS, right? Like it, things should cascade. I change it one place, it changes everywhere. Absolutely, I'm with you. Um, okay, uh, I didn't see. Uh, oh, Gren Grenade Code says uh, I'm 14. Am I too young for UX design? No, you're actually you're ahead of the game. You're, you're, you you should stick with it. You should start now. Um, and be self-taught until you feel like you need more than being self-taught. I'm a self-taught designer, so, um, and I'm 36. You're 14, you're way ahead of me. Keep keep doing what you're doing. You're gonna probably do a really, really great job. Are there any good tips for practicing applying design systems in UI design? Yeah, um, a few good tips. Um, don't start making a design system until you feel like you need one. Otherwise, it could be a waste of time, right? If you're just making a website, you might not need a design system. You might just need a style guide right, that you could implement in something like Webflow. Um, if you are a massive company that has, your products are scaling, you might wanna take the time to start making a design system. Um, and you wanna do it like eating an elephant, one bite at a time. Start with a button, 
you know, make all the different states and component states and usages for those buttons, document it, um, and then you have a button. And then what does that button get implemented into? Well, maybe it's like a lot of times you find that button in cards um, or, you know, table rows or something like that. Okay, then create a card and create some sort of system and uh, structure and guides around that card. And then if you change the button, it'll change not only the button, but the button inside the card. If you change the card, it'll change the card everywhere. So only do what you need when you need it, I think is the wise thing to do. Um, but definitely don't ignore it if you actually do need it, okay? Um, hey, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel um, and meet me back here next week where I have a very special live stream. I think I'm actually gonna be uh, redesigning a website for the folks over at Legend, and I think there's a giveaway. So if you want to win some cool merch and cases of free legend, then join me next week. I'll be giving those away. It's going to be super duper fun. Um, also, if you want this file or any other design files and extra goodies and assets, consider joining the channel, becoming a member, either a supporter or an insider. Becoming an insider will get you not only uh, my deepest thanks and appreciation, but also, also access to design files and uh, you know special behind the scenes stuff. And all of my insiders right now are submitting um, their work um, and uh, dis different design files of theirs. I'm gonna be doing a new episode of Rework where I take actual design files like Adobe XD files, Figma files, Sketch files, and I actually get into that file, rework it on the video so you can get your stuff featured um, on my channel as well. So consider becoming a member. Uh, I'm super thankful for you guys. Thanks for joining me on the stream. Find me here next week for another one. Until then, hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Rest. Design some cool stuff. Um, hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and we'll see you right back here next week. Take care.